trying to catch a fish. Hush, puppy. Oh, speaking of hush puppies, stick around. We got a his and her version, savory and sweet. You ain't gonna wanna miss this one, folks. For you people that don't know, my name is Kent Rollins, and what do we do here? We show you how to grill, we show you how to cook in a Dutch oven, and today is a very, very, very special day, because not only are we joined by my little sweet, beautiful wife, Shannon, we're gonna do a his and her version of that Southern classic, what is it? Shh, hush puppy, hush puppies. But folks, I ask you to stick around for this and as we get closer to the end of it, we have something very, very near and dear to all you people that have been following our channel and some of the new ones too. We have a, uh, a little special treat for you that'll touch your heart. So be sure and stick around to the end. It will be worth it. So his and her version of Hush Puppies. When I first started having them so many years ago, it was just cornmeal flour, a little bit of spice, milk and egg, as it. Sometimes even buttermilk. Well, and so we're kind of doing a his and hers and also like a savory and sweet version because... Who's got the sweet version? Let me guess. I huh? grew up in the north. The no oh, the north. And I think that the northern cornbread in general is a little more, it's sweeter, it's a little more cake-like. So that's how I like my cornbread. And right. you're doing the savory. So Yeah, and adding a little to it that I really like, you know, because I like my food to sort of have a little more going on in it. You will have all the ingredients as she always does in the little description below. So I'm not gonna give you precise measurements on this deal. Cause you don't know them. I know, <laughs> I know every kilometer in the book. Not a cup of cornmeal, about a fourth of a cup of flour, a little okay. more. Now we gotta have, what is it Shen? Cackleberry. Rooster that is bullet. right, that is right. So we are just gonna drop him right in here on top. Okay. And then I'm gonna need about three fourths cup of milk. To do the Kent Rollin cleaning method. There you go. Who's going to get it tonight for supper? The, the old possum. The old possum. So, well, that egg is just sitting over in the corner, minding its own business. Sort of beat him up on his own. Okay. okay? Get him a little well incorporated do there. Do you have any um, baking powder in there? I have baking powder and a little salt. Good thing I asked. Yeah, it is. So, what do we got in here, Shan? Jalapeno. Uh, jalapeno sweet mini bell pepper oh, okay. okay four of them one onion got it all minced up finely chopped at this point in time when it's you can see it's a little bit tacky and i want it that way for a little but i want to mix a little flyer in there get some in my hands sort of roller back and forth over here so you're just kind of like adding a little more to take some of the stickiness out yeah okay now if you've got some wax paper or something at home to where you want to just take this out you can just set it right there on that wax paper. Are we but done it's, with this? Yeah, it's sort of like a bread dough at this point now. You can see it's got a little. It's definitely. Let me feel it. Got a little hole together. It holds together, but it's definitely moist. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just take it and just pinch it off like this. Okay. You know, get you a little flyer, roll them in here. You can make them cylindrical. Is that a word? Oh, is that how you do them? Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like what two and a half inches by half an inch, maybe. Close. Three-fourths, seven-eighths, three-sixteenths. About a gnat's bristle short of 57, 30 seconds. Now you're gonna have to rotate these deals of rascals around when they go to floating. Sort of roll them back around to get that even brown crust everywhere. Grease is about maybe two inches today, inch and three quarter. And use you a good canola oil, peanut oil, something that has sort of a high temp. Them old people that I was around, we used to do these and have them big fresh fish fries. It weren't nothing but pure hog lard. So I just like to give them a little stir and make sure none of them little fellers has tried to join back together with somebody else. Frying time ain't long, two to three minutes. And hey, this, this, this is a done deal. Stick a fork in it, it is over. Why don't you tell us about your fancy new apron? Well, as you can see, folks, we are back to what everybody was requesting again. Can't get full on fancy. Our cooking ain't never been fancy. It's just been simple and easy to create. Fills your heart, fills your stomach. Whew. 
I know y'all be thinking sort of look like a giant Cheeto, don't it? It does to me too, but I, whoo, they good. Get you a wire rack. You can put you a piece of newspaper down there, put you a paper towel, anything, set them on a cookie tray. But we're gonna let these rascals drain and cool a little. <clears throat> it gives you the happy dance again. The onion and the sweetness of the bell peppers, them little mini sweets. Then you get that hey ya ya, some of that jalapeno there. Mm. If you know what this will really go good with, some of this Red River Ranch relish. I like to make them this way because they got a handle on the end of them and you can just. Ooh. Yeah. You can smell, I love it when you can smell the pepper and it's such a good blend with the corn. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you call it? Home run eating, you know what I mean? Kind of like lighter and fluffier than I thought it would be. That's what I'm all about, is light and fluffy. Light and fluffy. See here, I mean, I'm liable to just float off at any but time. But it is good, it's got a good distribution of all the ingredients. Yes. We have seen the cowboy cook, Kent Rollins, come into the kitchen and make some old traditional hush puppies and my it way. it was good, but oh, was it the but, best? Was you gonna throw a butt in there? I did. Okay, anyway, so tell me what you got going on here. So, I've got my dry and wet ingredients separate. In my dry, I have cornmeal, flour, baking powder, salt. I believe that's it. Oh, and a little sugar. I got a fourth sugar. cup of sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. In my wet, I have a half a cup of milk, two Whole milk? whole milk, two tablespoons of honey, and then one egg. So I'm gonna just mix that all together. Before we did all this, I took a sweet Vidalia onion and I minced up half a cup and I put it in the skillet with a tablespoon of butter. So like in yours, you just did it raw and it gives it a totally different flavor and it's good. But for this one, I wanted to saute it and get it a little soft with the butter. <laughs> saute? Because that helps bring out the sweetness of the onion. Go ahead and put the onion in the dry. It helps mix it a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna add my wet to the dry. And you're just gonna stir this until it gets incorporated. I, you don't wanna over stir it because then it gets more and more moist as you over stir it. So th there's two tricks to these. What is that sugar? So one, you don't wanna get these too large because they're not gonna cook evenly and they'll be kind of gooey in the middle. And two, you have to be, your oil has to be at 350 or maybe even a little less. You made yours the these more tra traditional inch. white, which yeah, is I'm, round. I'm just doing them in rounds. So, and they're what, you think like an inch? Maybe. Littler than a golf ball. Yes, definitely. I guarantee you, when she made these the other day, uh, there's a table full at our house and they was gone in about that long and I think the Beagle and Frank just got one little bite, so. Okay, so you're, you're cooking because I'm holding the camera, so don't mess them up. Okay, folks, we're about 345 long in there, so we just gonna drop them in there and be careful you don't splash none of that up there on your fingers. It don't fare well. Make sure like you do, you give them a little pushing around so they don't cling to each other too well. And these here will be a little different than them long cylinders I made. They will, you'll have to roll them around a little more to get them evenly browned every while. Okay, so now we've got the sweet version. <laughs> Whoa. And I do want to tell everybody, you can see that these are a, a, I would call them a very rich golden brown, which is different than yours. Uh -huh. And so you want to get them to this point, just so you know they're they're cooked in the milk. Let me you, see. I good don't know. job, Kent. Mm. Whoa, Beagle. Come on, buddy. Come on down. You're the next contestant. You have the, the soft center, the sweetness, and then that honey kind of caramelizes a little bit in that crust. Mm -hmm. mm. Makes it really good. Do you like the sweet version? Oh yes, ma'am. I could eat them all day long, both of them. It's and not overly sweet. I don't want to like give you the impression that it's desserty, but no, it's it definitely is. Sweet it is very sweet. good. And and we hope you learned something uh, today. It's about bringing people together mostly. Is but when you can bring this together and bring people into your life and share it then you are good. You remember what I told you last week, you gotta be a good neighbor. 
invite them over, set them down at the table, set them a plate, share some food with them. And me and Shan, thank you so much for watching our videos. We never take that part for granted. We don't. And I need to give a little shout out to one that's been on there a long, long time. Really, there's two, and that's my sweet girl Nadine oh, and yeah. Betty Boo from Arkansas. You know, I'm sure Betty Boo has had some of these. Be sure and always hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell where it goes dingy dong so you make sure you know when these are coming along. And stick around, folks, because I've got something really special I want to share with you in just a second. And God bless you each and every one, and we'll see you down the sweet and savory trail. Well, folks, I did promise you something at the end here that, uh, uh, it is worth saying and I, and I hope you hear it. It'll, it'll do your heart some good, but it'll also hurt it a little time. It will. And uh, so many of y'all have watched our videos for a long time and whew, how we love y'all for doing that. We do. And uh, last week was a hard week. Uh, we lost a family member, a film production man, a culinary genius, and a licking pot hound who was the happiest dog in the whole world. And that's Frank the Wonder Dog. Uh, oh, how we loved him. We did. But folks, he taught me so much about life. And he could teach you too, I promise. That is, get up every day and give it all you got. How did I learn that? We got a backyard back there, and y'all have seen it. There's a little deck there, and you've seen Frank run across and pee on stuff many times. <laughs> you know, he had a way of christening stuff just to make it right. But there was a rabbit that lived under that deck. And him and that rabbit had a ritual all the time. The rabbit would come out, I would see him before Frank got out there and he'd have his breakfast, wash his face and then just be sitting there. And every time Frank went out that door, he had this in his heart. I'm gonna catch a rabbit. Every day he looked, every day he snuck and every day he pointed. He was gonna get her done. He never give up folks, never. He never caught that rabbit but you couldn't tell him he wasn't going to. Sometimes in life, people are gonna tell you, you can't do that. You can't get that done. You ain't gonna make it, give up. Folks, I tell you what Frankie told me the day that I put him in the ground and I was hurting so bad. Dad, catch a rabbit, you can do her. So folks, when you get in life and you get something thrown on you that it nearly breaks your heart and it hits you really hot and heavy, remember old Frank the Wonder Dog and catch a rabbit. But he was the most comical dog in the world. He could get on a couch that was eight foot long and take up seven and a half foot of it, stretch out. He loved out, to lay like, on his back. Yeah, many. And he always, every morning, Kent yeah. logs on. Well, you guys know, every morning he logs on and answers all the YouTube comments. And every morning, Frank usually was there helping you. Yeah, Frank would get up in my lap. Uh, Lord, I know you needed him. And I'm just going to tell you, that is probably the happiest dog in the world that you've got. But watch out, he'll pee on something if he gets a chance. We love y'all so much, and uh, he wasn't just a dog, he was family. And they not only will leave prowl prints everywhere, but they'll run them little tracks deep in your heart. Thank you so much. God bless you each and every one, and woo, how we miss you, Frankie, but we know you're a happy dog.